Hey guys, Angie here and welcome to my brand new Let's Play and you're probably wondering this isn't The Sims 3. Yeah, it's not. Um, as you might or might not know, I do play other games and Guild Wars 2 is one of them. I am absolutely in love with it. It is definitely one of my favourite games so I thought why not do a let's play on it and if you guys like it, you you guys like it, you know? Um, this game is a MMORPG, so, you know, it, it's pretty much like World of Warcraft. You probably know World of Warcraft, everyone knows World of Warcraft, but in my opinion, it's better than World of Warcraft. So this is my brand new let's play. We're going to begin with a character. You have four characters, well, why did I say four? You have five characters um, to choose from. We have a Cha, a Human, a Norn, an Asura, and a Silvari. Okay, so I'm basically just going to read the information about all of these characters so you know about each one because they all have an interesting backstory and they all have their own place within Krita and stuff like that. So we have the Cha here. It says, the Cha race was forged in the merciless crucible of war. It's all they know. War defines them and their quest for domination drives them ever onward. The re the I can't speak. The Reeklin and the Four have no place among the Cha. Victory is all that matters and it must be achieved by any means at any cost. So basically, you have the Cha, the Human. Humans have lost their homeland, their security and their former glory. Even their gods have withdrawn, and yet the human spirit remains unshaken. These brave defenders of Kryta continue to fight with every ounce of their strength. So basically, with many MMOs, you always get the classic humans. Here we have the Norn. Now, this race of towering hunters experienced a great defeat when the ice dragon drove them from the glacial homeland nevertheless they won't let one lost battle however punishing dampen their enthusiasm for life and the hunt they know that only the ultimate victor achieves legendary awards so that's them we have the asura which to me is a very unique race like i've never seen a race like it because if you play different MMOs, you always find that there's always similar characters and the Asura, I think, are unique. So these alchemagical <laughs> inventors may be sure in the stature, but they're intellectual giants. Among the Asura, it is not the strong who survive, but the clever. Other races believe they would they should rule by virtue of their power and strength, but they're deluding themselves. In due time, all will serve the Asura. Very cool. And my favourite race, the Silvari. Silvari are not born. They, they awaken beneath the pale tree with knowledge gleaned into their pre-life dream. These noble beings travel, seeking adventure and pursuing quests. They struggle to balance curiosity with duty, eagerness and eagerness with chivalry and warfare with honour. Magic and mystery entwine to shape the future of this race that has so recently appeared. So the guys, I'm telling you now, go and read Silvari Lore. It is amazing. But we're going to be playing with the Norn. I really love the Norn. I love the stories. I just love the Norn and we're gonna go for a Norn. So we're gonna have a female character because I am a female. So here you have the character that is like the, you know, the base of what you're going for. Um, you have to select a profession that you're going to be playing with, which is just like a class. You have the Ranger, the Elementalist, the Warrior, the Guardian, the Engineer, the Necromancer, the Thief, and the Mesmer. Which is wow. <laughs> so I just read a little bit about this for you. The Elementalist is this character here. Very, very, you know. <laughs> the Armour is, you know, 
self-explanatory. Elementalists have harnessed Tyria's natural forces. The powers of destruction are drawn from an affinity with the four elements that make up the world. They conjure air, fire, earth and water to assault their enemies. So yes, they basically, all their spells are to do with the elements. Um, we have the warrior here. Very, very awesome. So warriors are masters of martial skills. They rely on speed, strength, toughness and heavy armor to survive. They're versatile in combat and benefit from offensive and defensive abilities. Warriors inspire allies, allies <laughs> and demoralize enemies. So that is the warrior. We have the guardian, which is pretty, pretty, pretty. Um, guardians specialize in protective and defensive magic. A deep sense of loyalty to their allies fuels their passion and power. They are also skilled with a variety of weapons, which they put to good use against their enemies. We have the engineer, which is a very interesting class, but I think you have to be a certain type of person to like adapt to the class. I don't know. They're like not, I, not everyone can play an engineer, like I've tried an engineer like various times but I've never got on with one, but you know, you know. Engineers are technological and al alchemical, I can't say that word, sorry, mastermize. They employ turrets, grenades, elixirs and a variety of other impressive devices and concoctions to overcome their enemies. So yeah, they're very technical. <laughs> Ranger which is basically where I got my name from, Ranger Angie, because um, a Solvari Ranger, yeah. <laughs> so, Rangers are proficient with the bow. They rely on a keen eye, a steady hand, and the power of nature to slay their targets. Their loyal pets, which Rangers tame and train, distract enemies while the Rangers strike safely from a distance. So your basic, you know, your basic hunter. The necromancer. Necromancers are masters of dark arts. They summon the dead to fight for them, channel blood energy and rend their enemies souls. Necromancers draw life force and use it to strengthen or heal themselves and others. So yes, this is the necromancer. Very, very dark. <laughs> the thief now. I love thieves. Thieves are adept at the art of stealth. They utilize surprise and shadow to get close to their enemies and they're deadly in one-on-one -on -one combat. They have an affinity for setting traps and going where they were never meant to go. <laughs> Very sneaky. And last of all we have my favorite, the Mesmer. This is actually my main character on Guild Wars 2. Maybe like one day I'll show you my main character and stuff like that but my main character is a Mesmer level 80. Mesmers are Mastros of Mirage. They weave mental magic that confounds, controls, evokes emotion in their enemies. With a wave of the hand they can shatter their own illusions to produce even greater special effects. Really love the Mesmer so yeah if you guys like want me to show you my main I can do that, that's fine. But we are going to go with the warrior. Yes, I really love warriors. So we're going to go with that. And here um, is the character creation, like you change their appearance and stuff like that. It's very, very detailed. I'm very impressed with this. So you have the height sliders and it shows you the average sizes for them. So you could be really tall. You can be the smallest that they go. I'm going to make smallest because um, as we will see in game, Norns are very, very tall and I don't want her to be the tallest, you know? So, here we have the zoomed in version of our Norn here. She's very pretty actually. We can hide the armor so you can define every body part that you wish. We have um, the lights here, this is for when you have a Solvari, um, their skin glows in the dark so you can see their glow and you can change their colour and stuff like that, but we don't need to worry about that because we have a known. So here is the physiques, so you can change the body type of your character and I always go for the thinnest one. 
which I believe is this one. Yeah. Right, so this one I always go for. And um, obviously you can change your skin tone a variety. There's a very, very big selection of skin tones. You have very, very light and then you have all the way down. So there is a very, very good selection. But is it, you know, with big selections, you take forever to make choices because <laughs> you have like so much of a selection. But I kind of like light six. It sort of gives you a bit more detail in the face. I don't know. Um, see, like the difference between the eyebrows as well. I really like that. I think I'm gonna go with. Mm, pale or light? Pale or light? We're gonna go with this one. I think this one is a bit better. Then with Norns, like with the whole lore and everything, um, Norns have tattoos. Um, various tattoos. I'll just show you guys really quickly. We have nothing. We have a um, like a shoulder, neck, and back, and leg, and blah blah blah. Very um, Aztec you will find with these they're very Aztec you can change the colors as well this one is very pretty it's got loads of stars this one you know the same like Aztec print with a um, like an owl or like a hawk it looks like on the back markings and stuff like that this one it goes on the face as well it's kind of like blades all at the back as well and the ankles um, this one is very very much <laughs> this is you know your typical um, war paint you know war tattoos this one is just a bunch of like it kind of looks like hand prints and like finger marks and stuff like that this one is a little bit on the body but then mostly on the face if you're into stuff like that. This one is a handprint on the face and um, we don't have anything else. This one is like half of the face. This one is just on the eyes. I kind of like this one. This one's quite cool. This one is just like fingers down the face. This one is basically like the other one without the little line. This one is just fingers like sideways across the face down the middle um, cool little markings this one which is just on the arms and the face and like the ankles this one is I like this one because it's subtle it's nice and we have this one which is the same um, another kind of subtle well more subtle one um, a shoulder one this one, my favourite, and then this one here is just more subtle but on the face as well. This one's quite cute, but I'm going to go with this one. This one's my favourite. Um, it's just a little bit on the neck and then a little bit on the arms. It's, it's really cute. It is really cute. <laughs> so you can change the colours. Um, I think. Hmm. I'm gonna go with the dark blue so here is the head options you can change the face of your character but then you can also customize them even more so we have this face which is a really cute face we have this face which is really cute too actually this face with like more of a smoky eye we have like an Scared face, you know, kind of mean looking. Um, we have this face, a few freckles, a bit of like a bit of makeup. This face, very flawless. <laughs> this face, which is one of my favourite faces for the Norn. Very pretty. This face is one of my favourites too. <laughs> I love it. This face, which is kind of creepy, kind of looks like a sex doll, not gonna lie the big 
you know the big lips and yep yep say no more um, this face which is the default face this face is my favorite probably gonna use this face I love it so much um, this face this face with a lot of makeup which I think is too much this face with crazy eyeliner and like no eyebrows and then you know this face so we're gonna go with this face and obviously um, you can change the skin tone here as well but now we're gonna move on to hair just gonna show you guys really quickly the hairstyles we got this one we got this one which is kind of long we have this one which is my favorite a really really cute plait have this one really long have this one this one some cute plaits that's really cute that is this one I, I like this one as well um, it's really cute this one this one which is like ponytails at the back this one is one of my favorites too I love it this one this one's kind of weird <laughs> and then this one is cute as well the dreads which are awesome gotta have dreads <laughs> the very very elegant um, one is really really gorgeous and um, we have this one very long as you can see the theme is here very long here and then we have a bald one and then we have this one which is crazy it's kind of like what an evil villain would have <laughs> And then this one with the the braided area. But we're gonna go with this one. And then you've got a range of colours here that you could have in so many colours. <laughs> but I'm thinking like a gingery ready colour. I don't know, it's, it's my favourite maybe this color maybe a little bit darker um, hmm light or dark light or dark we're gonna go for no we're gonna go for the darker version I think that's really really cute so then you have like the more in-depth details to do with the face we start off with the eyes you can change the eye color we're gonna have like a golden color I really like that um, and then you can change all of the eye stuff um, don't really want to mess with that because I'm no good at making faces or anything like that but um, you could change the nose make it shorter you know you can basically do anything you want with the face the upper lip you know you have that option which is awesome the jaw on the head and then we get on to the armor and then um, you can change the dyes which is something I've not really seen in any MMO um, you can change the color of your armor which is really awesome because I always remember playing MMOs and be like I look ugly I don't want to look ugly you know <laughs> so I'm just quickly just gonna make a little um, A little pattern to go with ourselves um, and then we will go to the next step okay so the next step is your background and you every single character you will make will have a well if you want it to be a unique background it depends on what race you are, what class you are, so it definitely, definitely goes into a lot of detail. So, um, the first thing is, I wear something on the battlefield. Because of this, I am recognised and given proper respect. 
So you can start off with a span spangen helm. Um, my spangen helm intimidates my enemies and inspires respect among my allies. I am nearly invulnerable when I wear it. A gali I can't say these words. Okay. My helm is open face so that my enemies can see my face and look at me in the eyes. They will remember who defeated them. So you got this one. And then no helm at all. A true warrior doesn't need a helm. My enemies will cringe and falter when they see the fearless determination on my face. So I kind of like this one. You know, I'm badass. I know I'm badass, you know. It's all good. <laughs> So the next question is, trouble may follow me but I use my to overcome it. So you can start with charm, I'm charming, no one can resist me when I'm at my best. I know just what to say to lighten the mood or bolster courage. Dignity, I am dignified even when up to my ears in mud, is what makes people respect me. A serious, thoughtful demeanour is the route to success. Or ferocity. I'm ferocious. Threatening violence gets me further than anything else. I'm a natural, though I do try to use my powers of intimidation for good. So I think we're going to go with this one. It goes with the whole, you know, badass warrior theme. You know. <laughs> so my most important quality is that I have the necessary strength to defeat ancient foes. I keep my body strong so that I can feed our ancient enemies and protect the Great Lodge. Cunning to protect the spirits. It is my duty to protect the spirits of the wild and it requires cunning to keep them safe from the ice dragon. Or intuition to guard the mists. My intuition gives me the insight I need to guard the mists where the souls of our ancestors endure in glory. So I'm going to do this one. Number eight. We have a recent celebratory moot held in Holbrack I blacked out. Ale, rowdy brawling. It's far too easy to let loose on the thrill of the moment. After I woke up, I couldn't remember what I'd done. I'm sure it was nothing too terrible. Got in a fight. I had a rival ever since I was young. He's intelligent, treacherous and cunning. I lost our last fight, but the next time we meet, I'll even the score. Or lost an heirloom. I inherited Ronk's horn, a magical ancestral ancestral Heirloom passed down through generations. After one too many drinks, however, I wagered it on a contest of strength and lost. So I'm going to say got in a fight. And number nine, when I was a, when I was still a kid, I had a vision. A spirit of the wild spoke to me and offered its guardianship. That spirit was the bear. The bear is the most powerful among spirits of the wild. She is a symbol of fortitude and self-reliance. She rode over me when I was a babe and ever since I've had the bear's courage in my heart. Snow Leopard. Snow Leopard is a stealthy, smiling spirit. She teaches us independence, strategy and laughter in the face of danger. To this day her wisdom guides me and my memory of her visit comforts me on dark nights. The Wolf. The wolf has the cunning of the pack behind him. He imparts the virtues of loyalty, ferocity and the strength in numbers. When he came to me, he whispered of my heroic future and told me I would never be alone. Or the raven. Raven, clever and wise, guides us, guides us with truths that others fear. He bestows a far-seeing clarity of mind. In my vision, he spoke of his riddles and opened my eyes to secrets that few others can see. So obviously the bear fits in here with the strength and you know, you know, it just fits. So then here we go. We have our story here. I'll let you read that if you want. But then we have to sign, which is our, um, our um, character's name. So my name is going to be Soraya Dawnblade. It's kind of badass. I know, I know. <laughs> so the next thing is. The very first intro cutscene. So, when that decides to appear on the screen and start, I will let you guys I am Norn, hunter of the take on with the story. Born so, the here you go. Rugged Shiver Peak Mountain. In the far north, my people fought our greatest enemy, Jormag, a dragon of frost and snow. The dragon broke our pride, but it did not break our spirit. 
In our last hour, we heard the voices of four of the spirits of the wild. Bear, Raven, Snow Leopard, Wolf. They called us south, away from certain annihilation. We founded the Great Lodge of Holbrook and claimed new hunting grounds. Some say we should not fight Jormag. I say the greatest risk is to wager nothing at all. One day, a hero will lead us home, and we will break the dragon's icy grip. I was born in the fire of combat. My spirit has been forged and tempered like steel. Like my ancestors before me, I seek glory. One day, I will take my place among the heroes of the Norn. My strength is a gift from the spirits of the wild. With it, I can hold back the tide. I can move mountains. I can overcome anything that stands in my way. I am still untested. But already, my deeds have earned me friendship and great respect. Each year, a great hunt is called in Holbrook. Only the best among us are invited to participate. I shall use my might to collect trophies that prove my worth. Then, drink and boast of my victories. I accept this challenge. I relish it. Come, danger. Come, adventure. In the lodges and halls of my people, my strength will make me immortal. This is my story. So there we go. Pretty cool intro, right? So now we will be going into the introduction questing area of Guild Wars 2 when you get first into the game so you can get to grips and um, that will obviously be in the next part because this part has gone on quite a long time now so as soon as we get into the game I will um, end this part. The next part will be obviously the introduction area and um, the first look at playing Guild Wars 2. So, I hope you guys are excited. So this is basically what it looks like in-game. Obviously, in the next part we will do this. So, thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know what you think of this Let's Play, whether it's a good idea and just anything. I will really, really appreciate it. So guys, I hope you've enjoyed and I will see you all in the very next episode. Bye!